All right, so today I want to move, uh, switch tracks again from last time it was the graphics session state stuff getting embedded and being retrievable back to something to do with testing. Um, because I'm running into, like, if I check, I believe, yeah, this is still good. If I run this, I only have like 60 line, line coverage is like 60% and 58% of branch coverage, which isn't great. And it's probably actually worse than this because this uh, is missing a whole bunch of files. It has to be. And then you get some files that have like really poor, like uh, the, the VK struct parsing. And what I want to do is I want to try to improve this. Not necessarily by doing a whole bunch of um, manually defined tests. I mean, they have their place for sure. Like uh, on the smaller cases, such as you know uh, ECS ID. You know, there's only two things: root ID and index ID. I can fairly well uh, manage or figure out all the tests for this because there's only a few permutations. But as it, this increases, like for VK struct parsing, like there's just way too many. Like there's a thousand, there's 236 different branches I'd have to try to cover, and that's just not going to work. <clears throat> so what I want to try to do is be able to kind of come up with a way of generating inputs that will, might, will which will uh, cover more lines and branches without necessarily me ha having to, to manually specify a kind of script that, you know, takes in, that uses like a template and then modifies things because there's already something that does that called uh, something called fuzz testing which can do a similar thing or do it even better. Fuzz testing, in this case, I'm talking about the American Fuzzy Lop is, or AFL, is a program that will take like a set of starting inputs. You know, you, 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 you give it the inputs um, that you know of, and then it will just slowly over time, or quickly rather, over time, it'll, gen it'll just slowly mutate the data over and over and over and over again and feed that into the application and see because it also instruments the application and libraries such as you know the sanitizers and uh, the code coverage stuff I have here to actually see which lines which paths which branches are getting hit by which it, by different inputs and through that it will automatically save you know okay well this mutation hit this these branches this mutation hit these paths and branches or whatever over and over and over again so that you can actually somewhat take a it'll do a better job of finding permutations and mutations that will work on a lot of things than i as a person as an individual person can reason about i mean i can reason about the obvious stuff the big stuff but there's a lot of like corner cases i can't and it can also figure out a whole, probably find a whole bunch of cases where you know the application will crash in that and it'll also save those and it'll put those up and say hey you know these are it'll give you the direct input that causes crashes and then you can fix, work on fixing them as an example if i actually check the fuzzy lop if i check the uh, page if i recall Okay, if I reload it, come on, there we go. Like this, like this uh, thing right here. Like this is an example of an image that it, uh, that the AFL would slowly mutate. In this case, it's kind of like deleting data, starting start to move data around, shift stuff around. And this is a binary case, but I can also do it with text. And then so presumably each frame of, of this image, each frame represents uh, permutation that hit a different path or branch or line in the program that it was in that was instrumented so like it just goes through a whole bunch of stuff and what I want to do is basically generate this entire set of data all the time and I'm going to try to use uh, AFL plus plus which is a derivative of the original which is no longer well it's no longer actively developed even if it is maintained. But the AFL++ is the one that's currently the one to use. Not 265, I think it's like 314 now. But, yeah, 315. 314, 315. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to set this up today. And get and and start being able to like generate uh, data sets. I think they call it a corpus or whatever, but whatever. But to do this, if I check uh, the, the tutorials or the build and install, or hold on, uh, fuzzing binary only targets, which is what I'm looking for. No, I need to figure out how. Is this, is it would it be in here? And this is a, how to do a single thing. There should be uh, uh, fuzzing depth. Okay, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. Instrumenting the target to start with. Uh, AFL. So I've already pulled down um, No, I guess I haven't. Let me do that right now. AFL plus plus Get that from the AUR. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. So now if I check AFL. There we go. I have a bunch of AFL applications now. Uh, so the compilers, analyze the fuzzing utility. So I think, okay, these are, let me double check what's going on. Uh, central compiler incorporates various value compiler targets, instrumentation options. So these are wrappers around the regular app uh, compiler. You want to use LTO first, then LLVM, then GCC plugin, and then the old fashioned yeah, okay. They don't have any features. So these are just faster, and then LTO is the best, the fastest. With LTO, presumably. Okay. There's another way I can do it with... And then some environment stuff. So first of all, the, what I need to do is I need to go into CMake. And I need to start uh, changing a compiler for something. Let's say, let's work on the, this is probably the fastest one to find and compile, this one. So let's say I want to instrument this with what I'm looking for. AFL, Clang, LTO, and LTO++. Okay. So if I recall correctly, <clears throat> here I need to check C make C compiler is the uh, and the CXX compiler is the other one for what the compiler being used at any one time. Okay, clang and clang plus plus, that's about right. So let's say, can I change it? I want to change that to be AFL LTO, oh, clang LTO. And then plus plus for the other one. XX, come on. Okay, let's have a look what's going on here. Uh, is not a full path and was not found in the path. Okay, so let's say it's. Here's a bin. Tell me where to find a compiler by setting either the environment variable CXX or C. Yeah, okay. Uh, 
it's just kind of repeating. Okay, hold on. Uh, Clang plus plus, and then afterwards, let's see if this is nope, doing the same thing. Okay, so I've changed it. So it'll be changed here in this in context and below. And then, then this is something wrong. You have changed variables that require your cache to be deleted. Configure will be rerun and you may have to reset some variables. The following variables have changed. The compiler. <clears throat> okay. So you make this. EXX compiler. Okay. According to this, this is the command that will be used for the line compiler. Once set, you cannot change this variable. That's kind of terrible. The variable can be set by the user during the first time a build tree is configured. If a non full path is, then CMAC will resolve it. Be set in the user supply toolchain file or via D on the command line. Hmm, okay. That's not. This is latest. Compiler external toolchain? Yeah. So I can't set it. Or I can set it, but you cannot change it. Okay, so what? When is the point that where this can be done? Can be done like before the project, or oh, no? This is a much derived application further down, isn't it? All uh, right. So <clears throat> in the root, ah, it's not the root. The root you make here. Does this work? Whoa. Maybe I, I delete the cache and then... No. Can I even? Before project? Okay. Before project. After... So I have to see make minimum required... But so I'm guessing what's happening here is, okay, because at this point the compiler isn't set. And then I'm guessing part of what project does when you list the um, languages you use, that's the point where it says, okay, I need to figure out the C compiler and I need to figure out the CXX compiler at this point. And if I don't set it before then, okay, hold on, is it actually like running... It is right now. If I for those equals one maybe. Yeah, the call is using AFL Clang plus plus. Excellent. Okay, so I need to set it here. Um Okay. All right. <clears throat> option Let's say AFL I can turn on and off AFL and then I'll have other options like AFL underscore something to keep everything together um, blah blah oh, um. uh, da, 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 da. Okay, we'll set that, and then we say, hey, you know, if, or rather macro, I want to put this in a function of some sort. AFL, set up AFL, enable AFL, set up. Probably make the most sense. And then we end. And then we'll actually set up AFL. Okay.
Can I see that coal man in here? Yes, I do. It's broken though. Cool. I'll figure that. Out. I'll figure that out later. Okay. Uh, right now. We do that. It's that. And if I remove this, it won't, right? Yeah, just nothing. Okay. All right. It's what am I doing? What am I going to do? First of all, I need to set up uh, getting the ability to. No, well, there's nothing here. Function. Looking for parsing of arguments. I have to have it somewhere. Code coverage of point be a good example of having nothing until the first function down here. Perfect. Argument parsing. Look at that. We don't actually have anything yet. That's the pre whatever. If AFL, we do this. All right, rolling back to this. There's a specific order that I want to try. Uh, do I want to? So right now, when I change between Clang and GCC, I use environment variables. Like I export, you know, CC equals GCC. Right by default, I have uh, Clang and Clang plus plus. Like, do I want to, if I'm using GCC, use like switch to using this, or do I just want to follow this order? This, 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 and then that. I, you know what? Actually, I'll probably follow just this path, right? If you're using AFL, you're going to use try to use LTO, then you'll try to use LLVM, then GCC plugin, and then the old-fashioned ones. So let's try that, shall we? So we got all this. Okay, you know what? I really want to get this um, formatted, so I'm going to take a bit of a detour right now to figure out how to get CMake format working again. Okay, that was a fine little detour. I just had to remove the AOR one which is broken and just use uh, pip and install it locally under a user. So now which uh, it'll just grab it from that one and that's working fine and that does this. So okay back to this back to this. How do I want to do this? Uh, let's try Let's say, hey, you know, we got we're using Clang LTO. That's the first one we, the first one we try, want to try to hit. So, code coverage requires checking for an application. So, find program. Something like that. And so it'll be what AFL and LTO, like that. CXX for that plus plus. And then we've got to say, you know, if this and this, then we want to set these. And return. Now, if this is a macro, actually return won't work because that'll just return straight out of everything, won't it? Um, probably. It's quick to find out.
interesting. Appears. Oh, I didn't even try it. What? What? Oh, I didn't set. Um, if I won't go. Yeah, okay, just exit it out real already. So we can't do that. So right now we'll be using that, right? Yep. So let's try the other one. The next one is Clang. LVM. Let's see, I need to shrink that down a little bit. Yeah, whatever. This was just AFL clang fast and fast plus plus. This isn't going to work, is it? It's going to do. It's just going to like roll through both of them a little bit. Yeah. All right. So I got to put it in like a third. Rather, I should just do like desired. And whoop. And then at the end, we're going to say, okay, if not desired C compiler and those then this will kind of swap through both of them right we'll find the first one we won't go for the second one that's good <clears throat> so if we have a desired C compiler I mean, I just need to check one, really. Because they'll always come paired together. I'm going to assume that they're always coming paired together. C and C++ compilers are, like, intertwined. Like, immeasure Like, just... All the time. So... What do we do? What do we do? Okay, then, then, then we set the compilers right here. So we set it at the very end instead, right? So there we go. No compiler. We have the Clang LTO compiler. And because of that, if we remove that one, then it'll go for the second one, which is the fast ones, right? Fast and fast. Okay. That's good. Now, I'll add the other ones in a moment. But first, like, i got to figure out the logic back here. Because... I need to worry about the case where, let's say, it's not in the root, uh, not in the root uh, project. What if you bring in, like, you you import uh, another library, another CMake project from something else, and then this is embedded there, but it's like in a uh, sub something or other. 
So let's put this here. And let's say back to the one I started with, which was here. Let's say I put it here. That is going to fail, right? <clears throat> yeah, that's going to do the... Yeah, there we go about this. T. Okay, we'll go down to C make compiler is still clanging stuff, yeah. So let's say we enabled AFL and we didn't find a compiler, first of all. We have this case. So we're gonna say, hey, you know, we didn't actually find so we got a message. A fatal error. Um, felt compiler was not found. Let's say I, I enabled AFL and I couldn't find one because I did this and then I did this. Fatal error, usable AFL compiler not found. Perfect. Okay, other case. This is so we we found compilers, but we need to make sure we're not overriding L you know uh, after it's already been set. I can't do that. So I need to say, you know, C make C compiler if C make compile compiler and C make C compiler string equal uh, the desired compiler let's say and not this so we have a CMake compiler and it's not the one we want that we want, then and we kind of do, do the same thing for or for CXX. Oh, sorry, double X. gotta say hey you know this is uh, not going to work so fatal error set I need to clear the cache Need to reconfigure. Before. Typically. I won't even mention the project thing. I oh, know. To 
typically uh, we'll, we'll say that okay we've got uh, one big beautiful message and then otherwise then we set the compilers So yes, Canute change to AFL compilers after they've been previously set. Clear the cache and reconfigure and make sure. Clear the cache, reconfigure and make sure. Ensure setup AFL is called before the first CRC exit compiler before the first compiler is set. Typically before the first project call. Okay. All right. So removing it from here. Okay. Putting this here. We're up again. We're using the right one, right? Yes. LLVM LTL PC guard. Does that change? Hmm, that doesn't see. Oh no, I need to remake. Yes, LLVM PC guard. Okay, that's another way to determine which one I'm actually using. Uh, okay, I wonder what happens. What was the third one? GCC plugin. GCC, great, that and that, and that and that. Okay, so we set that to this, and this to that. I wonder, like, what does it detect? GCC. Oh, G plus plus fast. Whoops. That's a bit different. Okay. Detects them as GNU one eleven one. Okay. It's looking pretty snazzy. And if I was to run it, oh no, hold on, I need to make sure like that. GCC plugin default, okay. FLCC, GCC pass, okay, what was it before? It just said that with sanitizer coverage, okay. Anything else I actually need here? I don't really think so. Um, I mean, I'll have to add the other Clang and GCC one, but okay, what is AFL plus plus comes with a central compiler AFLCC, incorporates various different com kinds of compilers and instrumentation options, and we can set these via what? 
Okay, you can select the mode for the compiler by one of the following using a sim link to the one or right now we're just using the compiler directly using the environment variable this with mode or passing AFL dash something via C flag CXX flags okay hmm There's no AFL++ specific command line options are accepted beside the AFL mode command. The compile time tools make a fairly broad use of environment variables which should be listed with AFLCC HH or looked up via blah blah blah. Okay. AFLCC dash dash HH or dash HH. Okay. Ooh, wow. Sub modes. Okay. So, hmm. There's a lot of environmental options I need to be able to set. Okay. So this is kind of going into, let's say, multi-value keywords would be where this would go. I, if I have something that says environment options, if we set the compiler, we set, yeah, we, um, set up AFL in options. We need to set something. CMake add environment to build. Variable. Hmm. I can set uh, environment, but it only works during the com the uh, configure stage, not during build. What I'm trying to do here. is I want to have like the environment variables kind of inserted right here, just before, after the end or here, really. Any point before we actually call the compiler. So I can actually put these extra AFL options in optionally. Okay, see make. Compiler version compiler. Let's see what we've got. Jack flags compiler ID launcher. Interesting. Okay. Used to initialize the property on each target as it is created. What? Compiler launcher. A 
command line for compiler launching tool. So this might be what I'm looking for. 3.4. Okay. Let's have a look. Um, CMake, C. This doesn't look like it. Oh, I haven't even put environment options on. So this is what I'm looking for. There it is, environment variable just before. Okay, this is what I said. This is what I was looking for. And if I'll do AFL2 equals, I get both, right? Yes. Perfect. Now, this isn't great. I need to make sure it's this plus whatever is already here plus what I wanted. those okay so let's add an option for let's say no not a, not a uh, boolean option I want like a string option to like with sanitizers, I believe. Yes. Where you can specify, you can either have it here because you want to embed it because like it's very valuable to have it here, or you should be able to like override it at the command line because you have something very specific in mind instead. So like AFL options. So that'll be appear right next to it. And I'll say, hey, you know, this is for, um, <clears throat> I don't know. Pass to AFL. Okay. So we can do that here, all right? We can say, hey, if then this becomes whatever this was. I should I should actually say like you know is that like a verbose mode for message message fatal error send error warning warning deprecation status verbose
know what? No. Whatever. That's fine. Um, let's say, okay, I need the other two, first of all. things around a little bit so we've got this and then we do hey you know a second line of if in here after we find the application and we say hey this or this makes a bit more sense right I think it does mm, I need another end if right kind of do same thing here okay that that and that Okay, uh, here, here, and here, 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 and here, and here, and here. So let's see, X. Ah, uh, sorry, not this one. Here, 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 here. a little bit easier now let's make sure this works nope I'm missing something something's wrong if if and if and if 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 and if and if if 
if and if and if 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 and if and if okay there we go of the MLTO PC guard Now there is another way supposedly to do this. I could just set um PFL flag mode, but I'm not sure if I really want to do that. I mean it'd basically be doing the same thing as this. And at least this way I can make sure that it exists, that the compiler I'm looking for specifically exists if I'm looking for it. Otherwise Okay, let's say Okay, I need I want a single option allows me to say hey I want a specific mode that's yeah it's a single value mode it's like um, do the same thing here I guess mode So, if this, if not desired, if we haven't found a desired C compiler, okay, let's say I don't have a mode, or There's another way to do this, isn't there? Like, if I actually... What if I just always look for, instead... What if I just find this every time? AFLC compiler becomes this. AFLCC and C plus plus. Was it? C plus plus. Yes. Okay. Those are the compilers we have. I can skip these or hmm. so let me actually kind of like hold this uh, just do that for the moment okay, first of all if I have them nested like this does this break right now first of all no. Good. Good, good, good. I want to keep that like that. <clears throat> if it's nested, it's fine. As long as it's the fur uh, also in the root. So we've got that. Let's change this up. Let's say you scrap these. Don't, uh, it's a bit too much. that and that okay let's say because by default that'll if you don't specify a mode it'll use the best available but we can set a specified if mm, set up AFL mode matches um, L string L T O and if like that and we 
we say, hey, you know, message status. AFL was, what's the word I use? Playing LTO mode. To set AFL to LTO, playing LTO mode. Good. That is a set, and then we want to say add compile options to dash dash AFL. Was it LTO? LTO. Okay, and then we just do this a couple more times. Two, three, four. Else. LVM for LVM. Mm -hmm. So what's it doing right now? It's using that. Okay, hold on. Let me use mode LTO. Shall we? Does it then do LVM LTO PC card? Okay, 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 okay. That's good. That's good. That's great. Um, LVM G C C C. Plug in. Plugin. We got clan. Then we got GCC. <clears throat> okay. Let's just uh, see what's. Let's uh, compile it, say. Okay, I need um, something that's fast to do, so dash d tests equals on, and I want to make dash j to test. So just, just one application, go. One of the uh, easier, earlier ones to do. Okay, links. The library, fine. It's static as well. Oh, does it work on dynamic? I'll find out later. Okay. I guess it doesn't work on dynamic. Why? Wait, hold on. I have to use. <clears throat> if I quickly looked over this earlier, where's the, where's the compile? Does LD okay? Linker also has to be a compiler. Um, okay, CMake. Is there like a linker thing I can do? Linker. Linker launcher? What does this do? 
what is this? New in three twenty one. Cool. Um, what is this? Is this what I'm hoping it is? Nothing useless to me. A command line for a linker launching tool. I mean, I guess linker language. Like, wh where's like <clears throat> C make C language linker launcher? Linker flags. Linker language. Tool chain prefix for Android. Mm hmm. Well, <clears throat> okay. Hold on. Let me um. What do we got? What do we got? How exactly is this? Okay, it's using the compiler rather than specifying something else. So perhaps because I'm not using a specific one, do I need to also add link options? Okay, there we go. <clears throat> well, because um, it doesn't know. Okay, because when I first tried it without an option or a mode, it tried to use just regular LLVM PC. Oh yeah, here we go. It's trying to use LLVM PC guard when everything else is compiled using LTL PC guard. So it's probably that. And then when I go back to LLVM LTL PC guard, it works again. It has to be the exact same mode that everything was compiled under. Which means <clears throat> I need to add this, these to the link options as well, so that it uh, uses the right mode, which I wouldn't have had to do if I uh, keep using direct compiler links. But yeah, okay, I'm using LTL, LLVM, GCC plugin, GCC Clang. Okay. I can add sanitizers, but that's using flags again. <clears throat> I'll probably want to. Oh yeah, I'll probably want to add it to these sanitizers though that I use internally, or something like that. But this does work, so I'll <clears throat> put that on as well. That's good. 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 Okay, so Uh, how does it look like if I set whoop, if I set equals what GCC plugin what does it look like it thinks it's clang again I don't like it but this is all less code I'll 
Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'd rather take this than the other option. Hmm. Mode environment options. Is there anything else? I mean, I guess at this point now I should actually set up a test application. So, and scrap this. So, libs, yaml, this will be the best location because ID is nice and easy. So, we'll do fuzz. <clears throat> we'll say on the end of here, if AFL. Fuzz, how do you get some P? That's that. <clears throat> Is there anything else? I don't really think so. I just need the ID CPP. Now, going through this, there is. Yes, this. There is some specific stuff you can do to make it much faster to run, which is something we'll want to have. Because the intention is to have like separate fuzz applications like this that you can run separately to generate corpus that you then pass into the actual test application. Like this is only the like, this isn't supposed to be the, the smartest test. I mean, it's just fuzzing, right? All it does is fuzz and provide output that you can then use elsewhere. So what's going to happen here is that we're going to include that, which means we also need to include, uh, not include. We have that, we're gonna do, do. Okay, we have that actually. So what's going to happen is it's going to pass in, let's say, let's do try catches. Mm, load file, which is going to be one. And then we'll have to do some Is this just like a macro defined on the compiler perhaps? Make, make the fuzz, make it please. Yeah, okay, so it's uh, something that's just compiler specific. So this can only be compiled in AFL mode. That's it. <clears throat> okay, whatever. Whatever, whatever I, whatever I, I did. Um, try. We'll kind of put these into separate ones. Oh no, if this one fails, we've got to continue. But otherwise, we want to try and catch. Say YAML read ID optional, which is the node name, which is just nothing for the moment. If the node has nothing there, tap 
test ID, okay. Read ID, read ID option required. Is there anything else? Is that it? Just kind of one, two, and then there's writing the ID. Oh, no, but there's also for if there's like a sub ID, right? Like you're looking, it's supposed to be part of a sub node rather than the node I'm currently on. Okay, then I need uh, the corpus. Let me double check that I'm using the no, right correct because I I've I read AFL like originally like a year or two years ago. I just never really bothered with it. Fuzzing with AFL blah 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 corpus. Yes, 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 I am correct. This is a synthesized corpus mentioned in section two before using this corpus for any other purposes. You can shrink it to a smaller size using AFL CMIN tool. The tool will find smaller subset of files offering equivalent edge coverage. So that's useful. Hmm. Okay, so I'm on the right track here. So I got corpus, I got, let's say a test.yaml, test2.yaml. So the first one just has index ID of two, zero, whatever, who cares? And group ID of zero. Whatever. Whatever. One, two, three, I need a four in this these sets. Then we gotta copy that in, we'll put them in here, then that, put them down like that, because we're gonna have sub ID, right? Okay. Make these and then go in to. Okay, uh, let me double check. How am I supposed to use this? Oh, they're here. Uh, the fuzz, the input, the output. Not sure. What's the dash D? Uh, M none. If we built we built it with sanitizer that maps a lot of pages for shadow memory, so we have to remove the memory limit to have it up and running. Okay, so that's memory, maximum memory. XML is highly structured, so D is a good choice. It enables fidgety AFL and modality. It skips deterministic stages that are well suited for binary formats in favor of random stages. Okay. Okay. I mean, uh, maybe. So we've got AFL fuzz. Dash I for libs fog ECS libs YAML test fuzz corpus. That's the input. I'll put as this directory dash D and we're looking for libs fog ECS test. Sorry, not test. Uh, libs YAML test fuzz fuzz. What's the at at do? Not sure. So 
Uh, ba -ba oh, here we go. AFL fuzz. I uh, input output. I have no idea. Dash D's not even on here. Maybe just an old option. Uh, okay, I don't know. I just assume it's useful for something. Alright, him, your system is configured to send core dump notifications to an external utility. There will be an extended delay between stumbling upon a crash and having this information relayed to the fuzzer. Okay, I'll just do this for a moment. Sure, I'll do this for the moment as well. Okay, can't quite do that. Uh, Okay. There we go. I've got seven paths, which I guess makes some sense. Running 11,000 times a second, 11,000 corpse checks. Wow, actually, that's so, yeah, fuzzing a lot with a lot of stuff. I don't know. Amazing, cool. Okay, that means in this directory, in the out directory, actually, which would be in the root here, somewhere, out. There's no crashes, there's no hangs, but there is a key. Okay, I'm not sure what this is about. Mm -hmm. Cool. Fuzzer stats, great. Some useful information, but the real interesting thing here is state redundant edges, whatever. So this is the stuff. This is this is the actual one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There were seven different paths that was found using those original two tests. This is exactly what I was looking for to really improve coverage of stuff. So those are the two test test two. Hold on, what? I thought test thought YAML had two things. I don't know why it's missing that. Does it just need like an extra line? No, maybe not. Or those ones in addition to the original. Hold on. In ID. Some binary thing. And a bunch of whoop, something with a bunch of eights and stuff. Okay, so yeah, this is basically what I was looking for: was to really improve, increase coverage, or make it easier at least to get, find inputs that can cause things, and I guess maybe sometimes crash things. So if I was to pat, if I copy these and put them in here, and then run it again, do 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 do. 
Uh, we're up to nine pads. No, it's seven plus the original two. Yeah. And part of something that happened at the very beginning was okay. Checks like warning output varies across runs. Stability. I mean, yeah, I'm ignoring a couple things. If it's true. So yeah, yeah. On this one, it says. No instrument, uh, no new instrumentation output test case may be useless for this one. And the same thing here with this one. So it does actually check, you know, if case, so I can actually also weed out cases, uh, extra cases that aren't very useful. All right, this is looking great for an hour and 20 minutes worth of work. <sighs> All right, so I'll just kind of scrap those for the moment. Give it this directory. Now there's a bunch of other things I can do to do with actually running. I'm like, but for now it's just kind of an idea of like, I'll probably just run this manually to determine to, you know, for a few minutes is to grab all the test cases, then put them in what I'll probably do is I'll modify the, these regular tests, like this one that already has like a bunch of manual stuff. I'll add a test case at the bottom that says, hey, now go through the files, like go, iterate through the corpus files and through that, make sure A, of course, they're not crashing and B, that, you know, I'm actually covering all lines that I should be covering. To really bring up that number for the uh, code coverage stuff. I mean, it's not as useful, again, it's not as useful as having like specific cases like this, but again, like this is designed more for, what was it? Graphics, VK, source, sorry, libs, YAML, where I have, you know, a whole bunch, uh, or I should probably say type parsing. Oh, I don't actually have it here. A bunch of d different struct types that I just like, I, I'll do it once in a file and then just let the, uh, AFL figure it out the rest, basically. Find combinations that do or and do not work and what have you. That's the hope. So this needs to be shifted out of here into CMake. I'll add this to the regular stuff here, like. AFL fuzzing. We'll do that. So let's grab some stuff over here. This it's 2022 now. So great. Got a nice big old this Thing though, I kind of need to make sure when I do this, uh, it needs to be like included way up here, right? Where I add it needs to be like very first thing. Okay, 
let's uh, change it up a little bit. That. This. That. Okay. Mm. Oh, no. Should have gone. Wait, just a second longer. Okay, and yeah, we're going good. LVM, perfect. something else I wanted to do yes the sanitizers <clears throat> to enable using sanitizers many 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 sanitizers so you know going back to this app the uh, github <sighs> I mean, there's other options right yeah then these will be done by users using the environment variable options Selecting sanitizers is the interesting one though, because I already have sanitizers working on over here. These will basically always be, hold on, use sanitizer, yeah. I just have them on and off for everything. So I'll do, it's very much like the AFL. So <clears throat> it's really comes down to like, it is, Mm. Do I have like a, a this is this macro or what? No, this is no. Is, this is not a macro. This is just in the root context. And then I'd have the same thing like this. This is a macro. I have this. This is a macro because I want the extra to call the extra options. Hmm. Is there a way for me to say, in in here? I can say, hey, I'm using. Hold on, is this even the latest CMake? This is not the latest CMake, is it? Hold on. Like I definitely recall, this isn't the latest form of this. There's a, there's a someone uh, provided a patch and I uh, added it, and it's way better than this. Um, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Um, hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to pause for a second, grab a drink, because this is going to require a little bit of thought on the how to do this.
What is this for? Not wanting. I mean, this is part of this, but what does this do? Check CXX source compilers. All right, so, right, back to this. Uh, sanitizer for fuzzing and code coverage. This is on the latest, good, right? Okay. Hmm. Okay, environment options and mode really doesn't seem, you know, does this, should this really be a macro? I mean, yeah, I mean, I have to put it in a certain place, don't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'll leave it, oh yeah, I'll just leave it as a macro. So what I'm thinking here for these, uh, sorry, not code coverage, sanitizers. Use sanitizer equals sanitizer address flag. Mm -hmm. So what I want to probably do then is add... Um, If sanitizer address is available, okay. What if we set let me go back here. Uh it is possible to use fuzzing. It doesn't say anything it doesn't say anything about being limited to a specific AFL compiler. So I'm going to assume it can work for all. So, if that's the case, then I'll have like if if AFL something like this, right? If we have AFL is enabled, make sure that the So we do that. If and if like that. And then we'll have setting up to do, do, do compiler option. Or is this hold on? When in when instrumenting targets for fuzzing. Okay. Only one AFL percent as a type. Yeah, okay. I, it's when it's instrumenting, so I do need to add it here. So it'll be when running the compiler and stuff like this. Append that. Okay. The append adds it to both sets of flags, right? Yeah. So we'll just kind of append. AFL use ASAN before compiling is this. We want to add it to this. Oh, almost, almost. That here. Or 
or otherwise, because this is after, right? Yeah. Then we want to do <clears throat> if this, I'm hoping that this is available. If this is done afterwards, then we do that. Mm -hmm. Wait, this has to happen after. We already have the CXX compiler, right? Because we have to actually test. Yeah. Uh huh. Hmm. So that almost always has to be after this. <sighs> so I don't actually do it here. So, CPU build, RMR, blah, 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 blah. We're going to say, hey, you know, this is for in LTO mode. We're going to say dash D. Use sanitizer. What's the address? Sanitizer flags, building with that. Okay. We did that. We'll do verbose. Do this again. No, not quite. Okay. Why? What's going on? Use AFL. Oh, okay. I see. I need to... Hmm... Can I do it non-string wise? Can I do it like this? Ah! Not great. Um. Oh my god. Close. We're very, very close. Can't you do this? Oh, I don't think so. No. That looks right, but then we got... Yes, semicolon garbage going on there. No, it's not happening. So, hmm. Okay, I can do... Append quoteless. Hey, hey! Let's do that, shall we? Append quoteless. that work yes it appears to do so okay so this is how we do it so we got that one Um, 
M sand. It's just M sand, so it doesn't really matter which. Use M sand. So we've got memory undefined UB sun. What's this? It's CFI sand. That's new. I don't remember seeing this one. That is new. I want to investigate that as well. But otherwise, T San. T San. L San. Can I do. Is AFL even available on Windows? Like, I don't think so. <clears throat> don't see anything about Windows. So I'll just kind of leave it here. I mean, if, if, if you try it on Windows and it fails, congratulations, I guess. That's on you. Um, but I will actually add it, at least. Just in case. Just in case they add, Windows decides to add useful features. Like, I'll probably also double check like if MSVC supports any of the other um, quote types as well. Dash I dot snake. Hmm. Looks like I've got a bunch of stuff to do here. Okay, well, um, first, let's, let's see what the CFI SAN is, just in case. Yes, it is an actual, completely brand new sanitizer. Is this it? Just just this one? Just address? Still? In 2022? Come on. When was this added? Last year. Alright. Yeah, they got a couple of decades to carry to catch up with. Okay. Hmm. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I just kind of like back this up a little bit? Back 
that up, back that up a little bit. Okay. What I want to do first, do I want to, I, I'm going to get stash this. So I'm going to do first, I'm still going to do the fuzzing one. But first of all, I'm going to add a new CFI sanitizer. Are there any others I'm missing as well? Threads, data flow center. Oh boy. Undefined. Okay, I got, 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 got. Don't got, got. Data flow. Is that control flow? No, this is something else. In again. Unlike other sanitizer tools, this tool is not designed to detect specific class of bugs of its own. Instead, it provides a generic dynamic data flow analysis framework. To help detect detect application specific issues within their own codes. So what? I'm not sure. And I there it is, control flow. Take her through the new control flow sanitizer. So we'll just kind of add it to the end here, I guess. flow integrity and we're just going to put it all on there sanitize equals CFI CFI available do that do that mm. Or equals C F and then we'll do I. Just adding more options. Um Okay, we are going to go crazy, which th this will also mean I can um, add it to this right off the bat, right? Oh, no, no, I, I just, hold on, down here, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, yeah, I'd put it on here. Hmm.
Sanitize function. Oh, another thing. Where is this coming from? I don't know what it does. Function. Not even here. Okay, so is it just part of this? Is it... What is this? What is this other one? Function. <laughs> Not useful. Okay, it's in here. So I already kind of had have this as part of undefined behavior sanitizer. Right? You be I'm just doing from all, right? Sanitize equals undefined. All of the group checks listed above other than this, 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 and this. Okay, so the undefined includes all of this stuff, so I'm good on that front. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So as part of this, um, I can add it here, right? Let me sanitize it and I add a new one. this one to do designed to detect uh, certain forms of undefined behavior that can potentially allow attackers to support the program's control flow. Cute. CFI. We'll just we'll just uh, shrink it back down to just CFI. Okay, that's it. Okay, can I just do CFI right now, please? CFI. Go. Yes. Uh. What? 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 Oh crap! 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 Uh, undo all that. Store all the files. 
in the wrong directory. Ah! Undo, undo. Discard all the three. Yes. Okay, we got the CFI. Great. And we got this one, right? CFI. Oh, that was um, almost very bad. We're in the build directory. That's correct. Still got a pro oh, no, no, the no, 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 crap. The 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 file. Oh my god. Oh uh, crap. The file. The the file with <laughs> the fussing stuff is gone. Okay, hold on a second while I panic for this. Okay, thank God, I still have it here. I could just I could just move back with uh, this one a little bit, so... Whew. And this is all still the same. Oh, wow. Okay. Whoa. See me. No, 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 just, we'll have it here, and we'll also kind of have it here, for the moment. I'll just leave it here for the moment, who cares? First of all, let's make sure, do I have, right, directory first of all, and then we do this. And we're going to have, hey, you know, this CFI, not available. Really? What do I call it? CFI? Sanitize CFI. Okay, if I don't have AFL, do I just don't have it available on this one? I don't have CFI available here anyways on this clang. Is this like something that's just not available yet? See if I, some of the CFI checks are here. More here. Right. I'm going to roll under the idea that my version of Clang is my version of Clang's thirteen zero. As currently implemented, all schemes rely on LTO, so it is required to specify FLTO in the linker. Used must support LTO, for example, the gold plugin. Okay. Okay. I'll just, okay, I'll just add this, because this is going to happen anyways. new stuff oh, both the Got that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run I'm 
to do this so I can get a bunch of uh, you, you and you. You, you, and you. Actually, hold on. I need to undo that last one because... Twenty twenty two. See if I flag if I try that, it it's not available on my one, but it will be uh, somewhere. this the approval We're back to that. We're back to AFL. We're back. <sighs> All right. AFL fuzzing that. Let's do this. Down. Great. Let's grab this. Let's put this at the top. Need to add some documentation to the function itself, of course, and then I need to add it to that. So uh, let me do that right now after I finish this, which was uh, get stash pop like that. Perfect. And I need I need to add one here for CFI. If I was it CFI? Scroll on down, US CFI Sam equals one. Okay, and then we'll just add it here as well. Oh, I already got it. So A SAN M SAN. Here, A san, undefined U B san, T san, L san, C F I san. Okay. Fix this up. Reopen the file, I guess. So I screwed this up somehow. Nah. Do that again. See if I say. So not doing that, we'll just do like um, leak with dash d afl equals on. We'll do that. Okay. Yes. Great. 
So we got this twice. That's not right at all. That's not right at all. Why? So go here. I have trash those. I don't want those options. Else hand, that's good. So why was that being added twice? Okay, we're adding it there. And it's on there twice. Oh, 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 right. Uh, CXX. Aha. Compiler versus C. There we go. That's why. All right, so that's basically it for the implementation. At this point, I'm just going to do documentation, which I'm not going to put in the recording because that's super boring. So, hmm. You know, I'm not really convinced on having this as a macro. I might just change it over to be much more like sanitizers, where it just happens in line when you call it, and then that's it. Because... To my mind, it doesn't really make too much sense to have like options here, right? Because whether you're using LTO and what environmental flags isn't really kind of a universal thing. It realistically is more far more dependent on your context, what you're doing at that time, which mode you want to use, which um, AFL fuzzing instrumentation paths you're using, because there is a crap ton of those. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually just going to rip it out like that. Bam! It's going to be like this. This is what's going to happen. These are going away. Uh, we don't have this anymore. We won't have that. Do that.
This file needs to be included in the CMake before. Okay, we'll do that. We have environmental options. If AFL, do 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 do, and macro will get rid of that. So it's not this. It's AFL environment options. It's that. It's that, and this setup AFL mode. AFL do 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 LVM GCC plugin Clang GCC. Do, 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 do. We do this. And that. And we switch back to this. It's just that, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, 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 good. And then if I add uh, this here somewhere, down, where was it? Down here. Include, mm, I forget. So we're here, we've got to go back one, two, three, four. Okay. Okay, I'm liking that a bit more. Okay, let me just make sure that I've got this correct, right? I want to do that. Mm. That works, right? I can add quotes like that to get the stuff in. Please, 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 please. Nah, dang it. This is not. Well, this was going to happen one way or the other. Uh, removing quotes. From strings.
Hmm. Okay, can I just, first of all, let me just echo. Or, um. The thing is these, right? Okay, so here it doesn't actually have the quotes. What if I do this? The thing. No, and no, like it doesn't have the quotes. So why are you adding them? Remove them. <laughs> See, make remove quotes. Strip quotes. Okay, okay, uh, this is kind of a workaround, but you can use uh, semicolons to do it, apparently, and that'll just remove the, the, the quote, so that's fine. Um, Okay, so I got everything. I got everything. Now, oh yeah, I want to get rid of this now. Next, question, can I do the sanitizer business? This was something I was kind of curious about was if I put the sanitizers where are they? There you are. If I put that there, right, what happens? I'm supposed to have the sanitizer, right? Yeah, there we go. Do, 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 whoop. Okay, I'm supposed to put that there. Mm, can't do that. So it has to be after AFL, for sure. So that, 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 that's good. That's great. Fine. Okay. Okay. That's it. I'm just going to do readme and I'm going to call it good on that. At long last. Long, long last. So, code coverage, sanitizer builds, C++ standards, um, compiler options, GLSL. Oxygen, catch, tools, formatting, link time optimization. I'm going to go back and I'm going to put it, because this is something quite useful to my mind. Well, it says useful as code coverage? No. But it is here. I'll put it here. So it'll be here. Uh, wherever compiler options is sitting. Can I go there? No, I can't. I can put it here. Whoop, get out of the way. Out of the way. Um... Okay, FL fussing. So what I want to 
do. So I want to kind of grab some of this. Let's see if I can grab a good quote off of AFL itself for what it is. I have a quotation thing, right? Somewhere? Up here? Yeah. Something like this. So I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to link it to AFL. daughter project blah blah blah, blah. okay this a little bit so you can get a bit more stuff on screen because this is a lot of stuff okay how do I do this up here I'll say minimum 3.4. Example C, 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 X, X. Search for and I 
and compiled. Specified. Okay, this is just documentation again. I'll just not put this in the recording. I should remember that. Okay. This is basically, I think this is it. I'll put this up and then that'll be it for. I mean, this is just basically getting it fell off the ground. I don't even actually have... I mean, did I? Yeah, I kind of had the one ID application run. Yeah. So that'll be it. So I guess I'll call it a night there. I mean, I'll commit it off, uh, off stream, but yeah. That's it for now. Cheers. Bye.